Good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's begin the, the topic. Our topic is Kata containers. Uh, some, some of you may notice that in the morning's, morning's keynote, I might have introduced the Kata. And uh, we, are, we are part of the, from, from the Kata teams. And uh, I'm, I'm Xu Wang from, from Hyper. And this is Samuel from Intel. Hi. Yeah. And so I might uh, give the background of, of of Kata, and we will give some uh, in detail introduction of it. So this this topic will will introduce uh, will have three parts. First, we will give an overview of this project, and then we we go into some technical details, and at last, uh, we will we will introduce some something about the project itself and how you contribute into to this project, and uh, Samuel will. Uh, uh, we'll, he's my co-speaker, and uh, firstly, I will give some uh, brief introduction and the history of the project, and then Samuel will give, give some uh, vision and uh, the architecture of the current Kata project, and uh, at last, I will give some uh, some precise uh, details of the of Kata itself, and uh, then uh, I will give some uh, give a demo that uh, how the Kata Kata project or the virtualized container. Uh, together, work together with Kubernetes, and uh, give a give a, give a simple demo demo, and uh, at the last we will give some contribution info. Uh, for the history, uh, the Kata containers uh, come from the two uh, two projects from Hyper and uh, Intel. Uh, we both uh, announced the project in May two thousand two thousand fifteen, and uh, Hyper launch launch. Uh, we launched the hyper uh, hyper, uh, hyper and uh, part of it is run v. That's uh, similar to run c, and uh, run c is run run a container, and the run v you you run the uh, you run the the container inside a VM, and uh, the Intel Intel Cloud Container announced it at the uh, I think at the same week. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah we are pair. We, like like a twin twin brothers. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and in the past two years, we have many in interaction in the between the two projects because that's quite similar. And and all the audience may uh, know the two projects will ask a question: What's the difference between you and uh, what's the strength and the weak point with each other? And uh, uh, we want to want to eliminate the the difference and make make we uh, some some by some means exchangeable so people can uh, can full use use the virtualized container technology instead of to cho to choice or think which one is better. So uh, we began this uh, began the 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 merge. I think it's pretty early last last year maybe. Mm -hmm. Last year we we have proposed to. Uh, to do some something make make our uh, more pluggable. Uh, at at first, uh, it's the the NVM part, uh, the guest the guest agent, and then the, we share the same protocol between the VM and the host, and uh, we we also part the OCI OCI spec. So, and in in this September, we have uh, we have met with uh, in in Portland, and we finally decide to. To accelerate the, the merge of the two projects and and uh, uh, and f in the in the in the in the past uh, I think three months we 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 working together uh, we working together f uh, and uh, try to push the, push the project forward and uh, in yesterday morning uh, a.m. Uh, 7 a.m. I think we we announced the the merge project and. Uh, uh, we we two projects uh, come come together, and it's now. Uh, now let's uh, shift the the mic mic to the, to Samuel. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, what do we want to do with uh, Kata containers? Uh, there are some technical aspects of the project, and there are also some non-technical ones. Uh, on the technical side, uh, really, and and this is why we merge because we we have the same vision and we are going for the same thing. Uh, what we want to do is, is running light and fast VM-based containers. And by VM-based containers, we mean each and every one of the containers is going to run in a full virtual machine. 
So the end goal is really to merge uh, the two technologies, uh, Clear Containers and Hyper-V, uh, together in the same code base uh, under the same repo. Uh, we want to seamlessly integrate with Kubernetes. So today we do that uh, on Clear Containers, and we also do that on RunV, but the end goal, obviously, uh, should be the same for Kubernetes. Uh, it's going to be multi-architecture uh, compliant, so it's not only about x86. Yeah, trust me. Um, <laughs> so we're going to today we support x86. Uh, RunV supports more uh, architecture, and the uh, the Kata container um, and implementation will support more than x86. And we will also support more than KVM. Um, we want to support KVM, Zen, and well, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, that's the technical vision. Um, if you look at the two containers, uh, the two runtime, sorry, uh, they have a lot of features in common, uh, but they also have a, a quite a few features that are uh, that are specific to one or the other. Uh, and really, the 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 objective of this is to make all those features uh, common and merge into the same the same code base. So things like uh, multi-architecture and multi-hypervisor is something that RunV is very good at. Uh, things like direct device assignment, uh, SRLV, uh, multi-OS is something that Clear Containers support today. So I'm not going to go through all those features, but the idea is really to have those disjoint uh, set of features merged together into one specific implementation, which is Kata Containers. Uh, we also have non-technical goals. Um, it's not only about merging code and working together. It's also about uh, being a vendor neutral project. So Clear Containers obviously was Intel tainted, and uh, we don't want we we want to go further than this. Uh, we want to be open. We want to be vendor neutral, and we want to be under a, a neutral umbrella, and that's the OpenStack Foundation. So we currently manage at the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, something really important to to highlight here is that uh, this is not an OpenStack uh, software project. So it has no dependency on the OpenStack. Uh, software component, so uh, we're under the OpenStack Foundation, um, and, but we're not depending on the OpenStack code itself. So uh, that's important to highlight. Um, and really, the, the final goal is to, to have everyone that's interested in using VM-based containers uh, working under the same uh, umbrella, which is Kata containers. OK, so let's go into slightly more technical talks. Uh, if you look at containers today and how they're run in the cloud, um, this is a very uh, high-level diagram, but the idea is to show that you have your containers running uh, typically under the same virtual node. So you spin a virtual machine, and you're going to run all your containers inside this virtual machine. One really important thing to notice here is that all those containers are sharing uh, the same kernel. So they're running under the same kernel, and really the Isolation between all the containers is a software construct. So your containers uh, are not reaching other containers because the kernel uh, prevents you from doing so. So it's a soft isolation. It's not a the hard isolation. What we propose with uh, Kata containers or hypervisor-based containers is to run each container inside, inside its own virtual machine. So one big difference here is that each container runs on top of its own kernel. So you don't share the kernels across containers anymore. Um, and you have a hardware isolation between all containers, and no longer a software uh, isolation. So it's all about security. Um, and one thing that I want to, to say that doesn't show in this, in this diagram is that uh, in a Kubernetes context, since this is a Kubernetes uh, conference, uh, it's not the, 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 the isolation uh, unit is not the, the container, it's the pod. So when you run a Kubernetes pod, your pod is going to run its, into its own virtual machine. And each container inside this pod is going to run inside this virtual machine. So there's not going to be one virtual machine per container, but one per pod. If you run just a Docker uh, container, it's going to be one virtual machine per container. But in the Kubernetes context, it's really one virtual machine per pod. And so, um, yeah, each container or pod is going to be hypervisor isolated. And at that point, you have the same uh, isolation level that you have with a virtual machine. Again, it's, not, it's no longer a software isolation. It's a hardware one. Um, we, I mean, when we talk about virtual machine, um, people think about starting their good old legacy virtual machine in five minutes. Uh, this 
mega uh, images that takes gigabytes of memory and so on. We don't want that with uh, Kata containers, obviously. We want them to boot really fast, and we want them to be very small. So we're going to talk about this a bit later, but th that's, that's really the goal here. Uh, make it extremely fast to boot and make it as small as possible. And finally, uh, we want Kata containers to be seamlessly integrated with the rest of the container ecosystem, with Kubernetes, with Docker, uh, with OpenStack. Uh, whatever your software stack is, um, we want them to be integrated transparently, so you won't have to change anything on your workflow. And really the goal here, um, as Imad was saying in, in his keynote, um, today you basically have to choose between speed or isolation when you have to select between a container or a virtual machine or running a container inside a virtual machine. And what Kata is trying to address is to, to be able to run, have both speed and isolation. So we are filling this gap here where you, you don't have to choose anymore. You can run Kata containers and you get the typical legacy uh, hardware isolation, and you get uh, the same speed as you as you have as you used to with uh, with regular containers or native containers, whatever you want to call it. Some more technical details. <laughs> so those are all the uh, components that uh, make Kata containers today. So we have the runtime, uh, as I said, it, it's a runtime, but we have a few other components. And but before going into into this uh, a, a bit deeper. I really want to highlight something that Kata containers integrate at the at what, what you guys are familiar with at the run C level. So to use Kata containers, you're not going to have to replace Docker, or you're not going to have to modify or modify Kubernetes. You just have to specify another runtime, something different than run C. Um, another point that I want to make clear is that it, it's not replacing run C, but it's living alongside run C. So you can have run C and Kata containers living together, and you can run VM-based container alongside with namespace containers, um, and they will just work together. So we're not trying to replace anything. We're not trying to replace Docker, or we're not trying to modify Kubernetes to use Kata containers. It's really important to us, for us to integrate seamlessly with, uh, with all the container ecosystem. So here, um, so you have all the higher level, um, Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenStack. And on one side, uh, they send or receive I.O., so STD in, STD R. Um, STD out, and this is handled by, by Shim, so all those components are actually talking to, to a Shim, because they expect to talk to a process and not a, a virtual machine. So we have a, a Shim sitting between your software components, Kubernetes or Docker, and the actual uh, virtual machine that holds the, the container. And the runtime is the one handling all the OCI uh, command and all the uh, OCI specification. So one really important thing is that, yes, the runtime is OCI compliant. So we talk OCI, and we get OCI commands and specification from the higher level of the stacks. Uh, then we have a proxy uh, here in this picture, um, because currently we're talking to the virtual machine through a serial interface. So the red arrow here that you see is a serial link. Um, the proxy, the shim, and the runtime talk gRPC. And the proxy basically multiplexes and demultiplexes uh, everything through a serial interface over a component that's called Yamux. Then it goes into the hypervisor, talk to the kernel, and we have an agent running inside the virtual machine that's actually responsible for spinning all the containers and all the pods inside the virtual machine. So I think uh, as the agent as a streamed down, really minimal uh, version of Frontier. So we have a very, very small run C running inside the, the virtual machine, and it gets OCI commands and specification and spins your containers inside the virtual machine. Another version of this architecture, a simplified one, uh, is based on VSOC, which is a, basically a virtual machine providing a, a socket semantics through the, uh, through the host, and then we don't need the proxy. So it, we have the shim and the runtime talking directly to the hypervisor without the need for a proxy. Um, Inside the virtual machine, supporting VSOC is easy to do, but outside, we, uh, VSOC is a fairly recent uh, addition to the kernel, so we can't just go a full VSOC because we can't expect all the, the host and all the distro to actually support VSOC today. Uh, but for those who do, uh, we're gonna, you can just keep the proxy component and have a, a simplified architecture. Joe, you wanna yeah. continue? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sam will give you the, the whole picture and the architecture of the of the Kata container project uh, component, and now I will 
give some some detail how it how it could be run as as fast as a as, as a container. Um, you know, for from the Kubernetes view, um, when you when you launch a launch a pod, it's it's part of to pre prepare the the images, the root FS to for the container, and the other the other side is to uh, prepare the sandbox for the for the uh, for the pod, and uh, for the uh, for the traditional uh, existing container D will uh, they will they will do this ser serially, and uh, because the the Linux, Linux container is quite fast, and uh, that's that the the main the main consumption is the the root FS pre preparation, and for the for the VM part we. Uh, let's accelerate it by par parallel to, to the to the both part. Um, as Intel and us do some do some do some job on the lightweight VM and make it, make it could be run uh, in about maybe 100 or 200 milliseconds. Yep, and that still consumes some some time. And at the same at the same time, we, we prepare the root half as um, that's the 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 up. The upper 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 part is about the, the sandbox preparation, and the down part is about the the bottom part is about the uh, the volumes volumes and the root FS preparation. Then we use the hot plug to make make uh, to make it together and uh, launch the start start the containers inside the uh, inside the pod. Yeah. So, so we all plug a lot a lot of things in, into the yeah yeah machine. yeah. So, so actually, we, we start really tiny virtual machine and and, and as we know more about the, the the pod that needs to be created. Stuff is all plugged into into the virtual yeah, machine. Yes, not not only about the the root FS and the volumes, but also about network and even about about the memory and the C CPU hot plug. So you could you, you could have the the eco, you can you have you could prepare the VM be, before you 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 pass all the all the specifications because you could hot plug insert the, the CPUs later, and uh, this is the. How, how we make it faster and uh, and make it small. We use the uh, minimal root FS and the kernel, and also we uh, the the hybrid, the hybrid team introduced some um, VM template template technology that uh, like do a VM VM fork and uh, make make the two uh, all the all the VM share share the same part of the the shared ban binary part. That's read only read only part, and so you you don't you don't have to to pay the Pay the tax for each v, each VM's tax part, and uh, and Intel Intel introduced uh, uh, NVDIM based uh, DX technology. That's that's just a, a, a in place running technology. You uh, you could just uh, to 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 do the memory map to the uh, map the NVDIM device to the to the memory, and you don't need to allocate to the real real memory. So so that could save your memory. And and also uh, we we could use some KSM technology to do more aggressive memory memory saving 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 here, and uh, by use of uh, of these technologies, uh, our partner Huawei have tested about the secure container technology. Uh, it's it could reach about uh, ten plus density than the traditional VMs. Yeah, it's still still some some. Uh, consumption uh, compared to the to the Linux container, but it's it's very high density than the traditional VMs. It just uh, just want to highlight something here. It, it, something we we notice is that when you run really really big uh, workloads with the KSM enabled, you actually get better density than than with the typical uh, well, native containers because we we actually manage to deduplicate a lot of uh, memory pages across virtual machines. So. It's not a, a binary uh, uh, overhead, so sometimes the overhead is actually negative. Yeah, if you have if you have many CPU cores, you can you can align the uh, the dupe, the dupe drop to the to the to the to a specified cores, and uh, that could could save the save the memory ag aggressively. Yeah, and about the networking part, that's uh, that's maybe one of the the most significant difference between the containers. Uh, current containers and uh, uh, and and VMs, and so we have we have some different method here, and and firstly, uh, the the clear containers uh, team have have the uh, Mac V tap uh, to to bridge the the V ETH pair to the to the tap device, and also we do some 
some TC to do uh, TC rules to do the the traffic 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 transfer. Actually, you you can do um, uh, you can do other uh, for the for the run. We we also have a specified interface. If you uh, if your uh, CNI script know that there there is a VM based VM based container, you can directly uh, plug the plug the, the tap device to the to the VM. C yeah. CNI usually don't care yeah. about VMs, so yeah. that's a, that's our problem. Yeah, but but for time being they will. And the storage part we we, su we support the uh, volumes either either from the block device or from the IPFS to do the file system file system sharing. So one thing to highlight here is that uh, with Vertio block when you have a, a, a block device uh, storage yeah. on the host, the performance is actually much better than with 9PFS. So and it's 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 pretty close to bare metal or native performance. So um, it's a much better setup than. Uh, not using block device uh, storage on the host. Yeah, yes. Actually, for block device, uh, even uh, for self like uh, net networking block device, we will ha have some uh, uh, performance comparable to the to the uh, to the host uh, yeah. to the host. And uh, for the for the IPFS, there is some some PD part. Yeah, it's it's slower than the than the native native file systems, and they have some some bugs on the on the POSIX semantics, but we, we have fixed the some, some of them. And some of them, yeah. Yeah, yes. And, uh, and for, the, for, the, for the usage of the, of the Kata containers, um, the, the Kata containers introduced some, uh, some change to the, to the existing hosted uh, Kubernetes work, 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 uh, work scheme, and uh, the 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 left side is the currently uh, we we set up Kubernetes cluster for different users and they use different Kubernetes masters for the for their uh, for their for their VMs and uh, and the, the the right part is what Kata do the uh, also what what we try to do uh, we use the the Kata containers use the VM to isolate the the part itself and uh, use the uh, the net networking part to to give the multi-tenant network to the users. Uh, this is just just like the the AWS uh, Fargate, you know, uh, make the user use the Kubernetes uh, with the Kubernetes APIs and uh, have the the native Kubernetes API, but they don't need to manage the Kubernetes masters and they have their their own users. Uh, they have multi-tenant, multi-tenant Kubernetes. So, so this this provides you with a, a CPU and memory multi-tenancy, but the the networking part, if you use a, just your regular CNI plugin, it's it's yeah. going to be a, still a soft multi-tenancy implementation. So you need to have what Chu is going to talk about. Yeah. And uh, here I I will prepare a uh, prepare a, a demo for this. Uh, there's another another project called StackCube. It it used the uh, yeah, it used the uh, virtualized container technology to provide a multi-tenant multi Kubernetes distro. And, uh, and Samuel mentioned it before, the, this Kata itself did, uh, doesn't depend on any Kubernetes, uh, and any, uh, any OpenStack components, but uh, the existing OpenStack, open uh, the whole stack give us some, some convenient, convenient and vendor neutral, vendor neutral uh, Services uh, such as uh, the, new, uh, the neutron, the cinder, and uh, they they work uh, they work in a, in an open in an open scheme, so they they provide the vendor neutral interface. Uh, we could use use this together with the the Kata containers and the uh, Kubernetes to provide the multi multi tenant usage. Uh, here is a as a simple work scheme from the from the Kube control you can reach the. Uh, the, uh, the Kubernetes master, the API server, and then you can you can allocate your ten, uh, your tenants from the from a, a custom customized uh, result results uh, that's based on the on the uh, open st open stack keystone, and you can allocate network through the neutron, and provide the uh, layer two isolated network for for each tenant, and. Uh, uh, we use the the Kubernetes called Fracti. Uh, that's a, a, C, a, 
a CRI, CRI server to, to call the kata containers or, all the, or other runtimes to create containers. And uh, uh, let's do the demo itself. Uh, where's my terminal? Ah, it's here. Uh, small? Yes, sure. Uh, so the, let's do the, you can find I do the, do the demo just on the Google Cloud. And uh, and that's quite simple. Let's let's see. Uh, uh, we have two YAML. We can, we can uh, still some more. That's great. Isn't it? It's much, much bigger than the mine. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, so that's that's very simple. We will create a user called uh, a tenant called test one, and uh, uh, we just we just uh, create it, and I I prepared a script here. So I can just paste it. Yeah, that's created. So you, you could you could find at the, at the last line we have the test one. It's it's active six uh, six seconds ago, and uh, we can create another one. Second line is created. Yes. And after we create the, the tenants, let's, let's see about the network. Bit, a bit longer. Um, you can find there is a network for the, for the, for the namespace test one. And uh, uh, you can see the, the network is, the address is uh, 10.244.0.0. And uh, for, for another user. And uh, the same, the same. Uh, the same net network network address address area because we have uh, uh, the independent independent layer two network so they can they can have, have overlap IP address range and let's see what can can, can we do uh, we we could we could just uh, create create and and part that run a single container for the Ubuntu. And uh, let's do something really bad. Yeah, I think you have uh, you have seen this line in maybe in in Stack Overflow to do a, to do a fork bomb. And this line is quite beautiful. So there's no no character no, no letters at all. <laughs> so you can, you can rename the the colon to to any to any words to any words, but here it's. I do something like like a like geek, yeah. Oh yeah, that looks normal. Huh? But now you can't do anything, that because it for it it used the pipe to to do the fork and fork and fork again. Now, many many the the process here and it will kill the it will kill the the part itself. Um, but but this because it's run in the in the single VM outside the VM that's everything is okay. And you can do anything, um, for example, to kill the VM itself. So the, the VM, for you, we use the, the VM technology. Uh, it, it, it means uh, even, you, even some, some VM or some part is, is hacked by, 
by, by, by, the, by the others. That don't affect the host or affect the other, other parts. So you can, you can safely just uh, kill it, kill it outside. And uh, uh, when they deleted it, will be uh, it will be, will be reclaimed. And uh, for the next, uh, like, let's show the uh, let's run some some part. Yeah. Uh huh. It's still here. It's wait, waited to be to be to be garbage collect, collected. And you could create in test two. And let's see the part. Uh -huh. Yeah, we will create a service and create create another one. And then we we could see them. Um, yes, sure. Really? Yeah. Okay. And so for uh, for the for the test one, we can we can see we have we have pods for the uh, for the for the Nginx, and we also could run the pod to uh, to check. Mm. We could run the busy box. And when, when we launch a busy box, we will try to try to reach it, reach the different services, and the, because we have a multi-tenant network, it can only reach the. Uh, you could use wget. It can reach itself, but it cannot reach reach the others. That's bad name. And so it's this just illustrates a multi-tenant network. You can you can see what 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 I do. My my operator that's that's identical with the standard of Kubernetes. Uh, that what what we will say that's that's a vanilla Kubernetes with some plugins and they they can run on top of Kata containers and without any modification for the for the Kubernetes itself. Uh, so any Kubernetes user should be feel comfortable about that. And uh, and because the time is limited, uh, so I, I will finish finish it soon. I think. Do you have yeah. Examples to show the creating the image from the container. Yeah, that's that's the, the standard image. Uh, we just pull it from the from so, the, yeah. the registry. You don't need Docker to modify Hub. the image. It's a yeah. just standard. You don't, Docker. You, don't, you don't need to do any modification for the images. Yeah, and for the next uh, in the in the first half of next year, we will we will have the first uh, one point one point zero release. And the, all the CI integration integration support and uh, and some some OS vendor support and uh, can we can we take some questions uh, if you want to get involved uh, there's a GitHub uh, yeah, yeah. repo so and let's just I think it's information, yeah. yeah yeah can you put the information and then we take yes. we take some questions I think we have a few minutes left so questions on the audience oh, okay uh, this up. guy was first. Uh, can you hold on? Can you? Yeah. So the, the time is up, so we will only take maybe one or two questions. Yeah, just a couple of questions. Sorry about that. We have a booth, and you can come and ask some more questions. Yes. So when you mentioned the 9P versus Vertail block um, into the VM, I was wondering how, how are image pools done? Um, and uh, is your local image cache on the hypervisor, uh, is that configurable, or is you know the choice between 9P or Vertail block based on that. No, it's, it's so so really it's about the the, the storage uh, overlay that you use on the host, and everything is cached on the host. So we don't cache the images on the on the on the VM itself. We just export it from the host into into the VM. Yeah, but I'm wondering how you pull those. So you know, like normally you do a Docker pull or, or yeah, you you, you know, still can, you can, still Docker pull. would do that. So do you have is one of your components <coughs> actually doing that pull? No, the, the uh, Docker pull is done from, from the host. No, the, the, okay. CR, the, yeah, the, the, CR, the CRI demons will, will pull, the, yeah. pull the images for you and prepare it. And it depends on your configuration. It could store it as a, as a block device or as a, as a file system. Okay, so there's still a dependency on 
like Containerd or Docker D or something, right? Uh, uh, so, so if you integrate with Cryo, for example, there's no dependency. If you integrate yeah, with Containerd CRI, yes. If you yeah, for the for the Containerd, it will depend on Containerd. For the CRIO, it will use CRIO, and for Fract, it will use Fract. That's that's all the different different CRI CRI demons. Another question. The last one. Um, I'm actually wondering about, uh, do you uh, give us the capability to manage the so-called lightweighted uh, VMs, their kernel and everything? I know that, you know, RomV and, you know, the Hyperstart will get the kernel and NRD from Barlib something. Um, we have a use case where you have, you know, multiple kernels yeah. required yeah. for different use cases, different ports. So that's that's a long yeah, that? that's a long story. But uh, we, ideally, we would like OCI to to provide us with the kernel and uh, guest OS images, and this is something we're trying to push into OCI. Yeah. But both RunV on clean containers and Kata containers will be able to support multiple kernels per pod. So you can run all of your pods with different kernels that you have provisions provisioned in the node. Yeah, so, so yeah, uh, be because the because the team come from the RunV, both the RunV and the clear container. What you got in RunV, you, you could get it in color containers, and we could do it yeah. even better. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all, and thank you for your time. We have a booth. Yeah. If you wanna, yeah, we have a booth. More questions. I have fifty-seven. Yeah.